Now in this part we're asked to work out the exact value then of this integral by using a substitution and that substitution is h equals 20 minus x all squared. Now why might we be using this substitution? Well I think it becomes a bit clearer if you actually square root both sides. So if you square root both sides you've got the root of h equals 20 minus x. And if you rearrange this you'll see that if you make x the subject x equals 20 minus root h and that's in the denominator here. So if we are going to use substitution, in other words change the variable, then this integral becomes the integral, well forget about the limits for just the moment, okay, of the function 50 over 20 minus root h, which we can see already is x, so we'll just put that in as x, and in place of dh we're going to write dh by dx, we're going to introduce the dx only to take it out again here. All right? Okay, so we have that and because we're integrating now with respect to x we need to change the limits. So how do we change the limits? Well, remember that this is h is 0 so we can say that when h is 0 we can find out what the equivalent x value is by putting it into here. So when h is 0 we have 20 minus the square root of 0 which will just leave us with 20. So x would equal 20. So pop that in there. And similarly when we have h is 100 we can put when h is 100 put it into here. Square root of 100 is 10. 20 take away 10 is 10. So x is 10 and that would be the upper limit. Notice by the way that the lower limit is bigger than the upper limit. Don't make the mistake of just switching these two limits around and putting the 20 on the top. Just keep it as it is. Okay, so we now move on to the next stage. So we've got our integral going from 20 to 10, 50 over x. What we need to do now is establish what dh by dx is in terms of x. So to do that what I'm going to do is take this equation here and work out what dx by dh is and then do the reciprocal of that. So we also know that dx by dh will be equal to differentiating 20, well that's 0, this is minus h to the half, so differentiating that will give minus a half h to the minus a half, which is the same as minus 1 over 2 root h. So therefore, dh by dx will be equal to minus 2 root h. But I need dh by dx in terms of x. I need the whole integral in x. So what does root h equal? Well I can see up here that root h is 20 minus x. So this is the same as minus 2 times 20 minus x. I could leave that like this but I prefer not to have this minus sign in here so I can take the minus through the bracket and just rewrite this as 2 bracket x minus 20. You don't have to do that, but I just find that it reduces the number of negatives that I have. Okay, so I'm going to substitute dh by dx in. Okay, so we have 2 multiplied by x minus 20, and that's integrated now with respect to x. Clean this up next, and so we have 50 times 2, which is 100, and I'm going to pull that out the front of the integral the integral going from 20 to 10 and then we have x minus 20 over x so just write that in x minus 20 over x and that's integrated with respect to x I can clean this up get it prepared for the integral so put the limits in 20 to 10 so we have x over x which is 1 and 20 over x, I'm just going to leave that as minus 20 over x. 
couple of terms here, don't forget then the brackets, integrated with respect to x. So what we have is 100 and then square brackets. The integral of 1 with respect to x is x and the integral of minus 20 over x with respect to x is 20 times the natural log of x. And that's going from 20 to 10. I won't bother putting mod signs in here because I can see that I'll be doing the natural log of a positive value. All I need to do now is put the limits in. So starting with the 10, for x we would have 10 minus 20 times the natural log of 10. Put that in brackets if you like. Then we minus and then we put the 20 through so we have 20 minus 20 times the natural log of 20. Clean this up a bit further and we'll leave the 100 out the front here and what I have here, let's have a look at the natural logs first. I can see that I've got minus minus 20 natural log 20 so that's plus 20 natural log 20 20 natural log 20 then I have minus 20 natural log 10 and then I have 10 here minus 20 so that's going to be minus 10 let's just scroll that up a bit so have the 100 and in here we've got 20 as a common factor and we have the natural log then of 20 minus the natural log of 10 which is the same as the natural log of 20 over 10 by the subtraction rule for logs. So we have that and then minus 10 on the end. Moving down to the next stage, 100 then. This cancels, 10 into 20 goes 2 so I can see that I've got 20 natural log 2 minus 10. I could pull out 10 as well now as a common factor. So that becomes 100 times 10, that's 1000. And if I pull out that 10, I've just got simply 2 natural log of 2, 2 natural log of 2 minus 1. You could in fact even use the power rule for logs if you like. You could put this 2 up here as a power so you'd have the natural log of 2 to the power 2. In other words you could have 1000 multiplied by the natural log of 2 squared, in other words 4 minus 1. Whatever. Anyway, either of these answers are the exact value of the integral. So Hopefully you've been able to follow that and that brings us now to the end of this part.